makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men, and 924 leading retail stores from coast to coast present the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character of Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes is portrayed by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by Alfred Shirley, and the dramatizations are by Edith Miser. Well, here we are, about to enter Dr. Watson's familiar study. Hello, what's this? We find the good doctor hanging up his Christmas holly. Not getting a sprig of mistletoe, Mr. Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Hope springs eternal, as they say. But here, help me down from this chair. My old legs aren't as agile as they were in the days when I followed Holmes through the dungeons and up the tower stairs of old Pensdagon Castle. Here we are. Oh, thanks. That sounds suspiciously like the beginning of a Sherlock Holmes yarn, Dr. Watson. It is, Mr. Harris, it is. Holmes always called it the adventure of the Christmas bride. It concerns a ghostly lady in white who was supposed to have disappeared centuries ago. The honor of a noble family and a certain Father Christmas who suddenly sang bass. And now, while I fix us both a yuletide tolly, suppose you'll tell our friends and listeners about a gift every man in our audience would welcome from Father Christmas. Or as you Americans call him, Santa Claus. With pleasure, Dr. Watson. And not only from Santa Claus. A thrifty man can give himself a worthwhile gift any time if he insists on Clippercraft. For Clippercraft clothes, keep on giving for a long, long time. First of all, you've never seen such truly fine clothes at such really low prices. That means you pocket the savings. That's the first gift to yourself. And they also give you superb styling, perfect fit, and long wear. Clippercraft clothes give you so very much because of the unique Clippercraft plan, concentrating the buying power of 924 of the nation's leading stores from coast to coast. That means tremendous savings in manufacturing and distribution costs. And yours are the savings this brilliant plan makes possible. Clippercraft suits are only 40 and 45 dollars. Clippercraft top coats and overcoats only forty dollars, and sport jackets only twenty six fifty. Clippercraft values are so amazing. We urge you to compare them with clothes selling for many dollars more. And now, how about that Christmas bride, Doctor Watson? Her name was Ginevra. And she was the heir and only child of Lord Robert Neville, 10th Earl and 54th Baron Pensdragon of Pensdragon Castle. Yes, I shall never forget my first glimpse of that ancient and somewhat forbidding edifice. The walls grey and bleak without their summer covering of ivy. The towers square and defiant with the red or rouge dragon pennant angrily defying the winter gales. Well, as I was saying, a rather urgent message from Lord Neville on elegant embossed stationery had arrived at 221B Baker Street. Would Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson do him the honor of a visit to Penn's Dragon over the Christmas holidays? The visit to include the wedding of his daughter, Lady Ginevra, to the immensely wealthy but slightly middle-aged Wentworth Trimmingham which was due to occur on the second day of the new year. Now, don't tell me the eminent Mr. Sherlock Holmes was called in to guard the wedding presents, Dr. Watson. <laughs> Hardly, Mr. Harris. At any rate, the day before Christmas found us alighting from our train at a small station in the Cumberland Hills, which, as you know, are situated in the north of England. There had been a slight fall of snow. An ancient carriage with red wheels and the Neville arms on the door was drawn up to the station platform while the anxious face of the Lord of the Manor himself, in top hat and earmuffs, peered through one of the steamy windows. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. That's right. Uh, this way, gentlemen. His lordship's expecting you in carriage. Quite a fall of snow you've had here. Aye, sir. More are coming. By rights, we should have brought the sleigh. Only his lordship loaned it to the vicar for tomorrow night. Vicar always plays fire to Christmas at the hall on Christmas Eve, I know mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, oh, sir. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, hop in before you freeze to death. Thank you. Are you here, Mr. Holmes? Uh, your friend opposite. Ah. And now then, Dennis, back to Penn's Dragon as fast as you can. Aye, my lord. Ah, 
Mr. Holmes, you are doubtless curious as to why I've invited you and Dr. Watson to share our Yuletide celebrations at Pendragon. To be quite honest, Lord Neville, I didn't think it was entirely for the pleasure of our society, although Watson is quite an asset when it comes to carol singing. Oh, tenor? No, certainly not. Baritone. Oh, oh, that's good. The vicar who leads the Christmas singing is rather proud of his tenor voice, and I may say he's not too fond of competition. No. Uh, Mr. Holmes... I have invited you to Penn's Dragon to make sure that nothing, nothing occurs to prevent the marriage of my daughter to Mr. Wentworth Trimmingham. Why is that marriage so imperative, Lord Neville? Uh, to be brutally frank, Mr. Holmes, the Neville estates are mortgaged up to the ears. If the marriage does not go through on the second of next month, I shall be bankrupt, totally bankrupt. I see. Has anything occurred, Lord Neville, to make you fear that this marriage may not take place? Well, no. That is nothing definite. Perhaps the Lady Ginevra hasn't been able to hide her distaste for the match. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing like that. Well, I, I wouldn't say it was a passionate attachment on either side. But they, they like the same things. She laughs at all his jokes. What better foundation could one ask for a marriage, eh, Watson? Well, that's what I should have said. Well, everything was as smooth as silk until the Dowager Duchess of Terse gave the engagement dinner last month. It was at her suggestion that I sent you the invitation to Penn's Dragon. She's been decidedly edgy ever since Percy returned in the midst of the betrothal dinner two weeks ago. Percy? Yes, Percy is my cousin, although he's only seven years older than Ginevra. He's our next of kin. See. As a matter of fact, he's an orphan and lived with us at Penn's Dragon until he went off to Canada to seek his fortune two years ago. If anything should happen to your daughter before she produced an heir, would Percy Neville inherit? Yes, Dr. Watson. Both the title and the estates. Percy Neville's return was unexpected, I gather. It was. Unexpected and melodramatic, to say the least. The betrothal dinner was being held in the great hall of Penn's Dragon Castle. My daughter had just risen to return the bridegroom's toast. As she lifted her glass, a casement window was thrown violently open and Percy walked in out of the night. And now I should like to make a toast to my future bridegroom. Percy! <laughs> Good heavens, Percy, is it really you? I'm sorry to make such an abrupt entrance, yes. Lady Terse, but I came as soon as I received news of the engagement. Percy, why didn't you let us know you were coming? Let you know? Let you know when you never bothered to answer my letters? But, Percy, we never received any letters. We, we thought you'd forgotten us. I had forgotten, as if that would have mattered. Percy, that's not true. You know how fond I... we are of you. How touching. Percy, this is Wentworth. Wentworth Trimmingham, my future bridegroom. So, this is the little man they've sold you to. Stop that. Stop it at once. I'm very fond of Wentworth. Are you, my dear Ginevra? Percy, why do you look at me like that? To think you should so soon forget our family motto. Ne vile bailis. The name Neville means that, you know. Ne vile bailis. <laughs> Latin, I take it, eh, Holmes? Quite. It means stoop to nothing base, in case you've forgotten your obit, Watson. Oh, teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Tell me, Lord Neville, what happened after Percy quoted the family motto to your daughter? Uh, he stamped off to his old rooms in the tower and hasn't been out of them since. How does the Lady Ginevra react to this unfriendly behavior? Oh, she says let him sulk. It's no concern of hers. Lady Terse, on the other hand, is thoroughly unnerved by Percy's return. Oh? Yes, she feels sure he'll do something outrageous the day of the wedding... Poor Wentworth is as edgy as a hen on a hot griddle. And, of course, that may be due to his encounter with the white lady. White lady? Who's she? The ghost of the first Ginevra, you know. The bride who played hide-and-seek on her wedding night and was never seen alive again. Years later, her skeleton was found in her great dower chest, still dressed in her wedding gown. She'd hidden in there, and somehow the hasp must have fallen down, and she was locked in and smothered to death. Seems to me I remember a rather famous poem on the subject. Oh, yes. So all the Ginevras in the Neville family have been named after her. She's supposed to walk through the halls of the castle whenever a misfortune is due to occur. Oh, cheerful damsel, eh, Holmes? When and how did Wentworth Trimmingham meet the lady? Well, Mr. Holmes, it seems it's his habit to knock on my daughter's door on his way to bed to wish her good night. Last night, the wind was rather high and he couldn't seem to make my daughter hear. Suddenly, he heard a strange creaking noise down the corridor behind him. Looking round, 
he saw the lid of the dower chest rise slowly. Ginevra. Ginevra, my dear, it's I, Wentworth. I've come to bid you good night. Ginevra, are you there? Ginevra! Who calls me? What was that? Good Lord, the, well, the lid of the chest is rising. There's something. A woman in white. She's rising out of the chest. Who, who, who are you? The first Ginevra. You call to me. So I have come to warn you. Go away. Go away before it is too late. Then what happened, Lord Neville? Uh, nothing, Mr. Holmes. Apparently, the white figure glided past my daughter's fiancé and disappeared up the tower stairs. Hmm. What did the lady look like? Blonde, brunette? Uh, Wentworth says her features were hidden by the bridal veil. Yes. Interesting. I suppose anyone in the house would have access to that tower chest. On the contrary, Mr. Holmes. Too many people are possessed of insatiable curiosity. I keep the silly thing safely padlocked, I promise you. How many keys are there to that padlock? One which I keep by me, here, on my key ring. A very wise precaution. I say, Holmes, your bed is even larger than the one in my room. The butler tells me Queen Victoria slept there when she paid a visit in 1846. Don't look so superior, Watson. Queen Elizabeth, I'm told, slept here quite a few years before that. Oh. Come in. Oh, Lady Tuss, beautiful and charming as ever. Stuff and nonsense. Glad to see you, both of you. Something's going on here. Don't like it. What sort of something are you referring to, Lady Tuss? Don't know. If I did, shouldn't have sent for you. Ginevra looks as if butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. Bad sign. Percy looks like a thundercloud. That's worse. I thought Percy had locked himself in his rooms and refused to see anyone. I'd like to see anyone refuse to see me. Oh, but I'm Gavin. Uh, you will want to view the premises. Yes. First of all, I'd like to inspect that dour chest. It might be interesting to investigate how a lady in white can emerge from a carefully padlocked coffer. Then you don't think it was a ghost. Neither do I. Well, what was she up to? We should be able to answer those questions better, Lady Terse, after you've had a look inside that box. I wonder if you could persuade Lord Neville to lend us the key. Here's the key, Mr. Holmes. Lord Neville insists I bring it back the moment you've finished with it. Oh, suspicious old boy, eh, Holmes? Not suspicious, Dr. Watson. Fussy. Well, Mr. Holmes, why the delay? Open the silly chest. Let's see what's inside. So fast, Lady Terse, not so fast. First, let's have a look at the lock. Heavy old bit of machinery. Yes, yeah, almost impossible to pick it without showing signs. There are no signs. Then whoever opened it used that key. Not necessarily, Watson. But there's only one key Lord Neville told us so. And if Robert says a thing, it's gospel. Yes. Interesting carving around the lock. The wood's very old. Mm, naturally. Open it up. I'm dying of curiosity. Very well. The lock needs oiling. It hasn't been unlocked for some time. I'll remove the padlock. Here, Watson, hold it. Now, Lady Terse, if you'll help me raise the lid. Right. Good Lord, what's that? Oh, it's Thor, Ginevra's spaniel. Goes everywhere with her. Regular shadow. Oh, yes, here she comes. Hello there. I'm Ginevra. Why, you must be Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Delighted. Don't let me stop you, Mr. Holmes. You won't. Father told me what you're up to. I'm dying to see what's in the chest, too. Go ahead, open it up. Down, good, down, boy. You see, it's a biggish box, isn't it? Yes, a woman could easily hide in there. Hmm, something uh, white and uh, satin lying on the bottom. Wonderful. It must be her wedding dress. I've always heard it was still in there. Remarkable to find it in such good condition after all these years. The remarkable thing about it, Lady Ginevra, is this dust and dirt on the hem. Watson, give me an envelope. I shall want to take a sample. But that's fascinating. I've heard simply fabulous things about you, Mr. Holmes, and now I believe them, every one. Do you? Yes, I think we've seen everything there is to be seen here. Watson, you may close the lid and lock it. Right. Uh-huh. 
So this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes and his famous deductions. They told me you were coming. They? Who's they? I understood you've let no one in here, not even the maid. You've overlooked Lady Terse. Try to keep her out of anything. I didn't mention Mr. Holmes, Percy. Or did I? Don't look so suspicious, Lady Terse. I've decided to be a good boy. I've even decided to come downstairs tonight and join in the Christmas Eve festivities. Percy, that gleam in your eye. I've known you too long. You're up to something. If you want to know what satisfying people really means, ask any man who wears clipper craft clothes. He'll sing their praises, with good reason, too. For values like Clippercraft amaze even clothing experts. Until you see Clippercraft clothes and try them on, you won't believe such really superb suits are possible at only $40 and $45. And such rich, long-wearing top coats and overcoats at only $40. Such very smart sport jackets at only $26.50. For just a fraction of what you'd expect to pay, you get correct styling, perfect fit, and long-wearing materials. An ingenious plan makes this all possible. The Clippercraft plan, which concentrates the buying power of 924 of the nation's leading stores from coast to coast. You get the savings that result from this group buying at your own local independent store, the store you can trust. Selling inexpensive clothes at inexpensive low prices at the nation's finest independent stores is the great big idea behind the Clippercraft plan. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suit, top coat, and overcoat. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street. Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. In Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Calm yourself, Geneva. He'll be here. But, Percy, the snow's so deep. What if he can't get through? Now, don't worry. The sleigh is light, and he has Vixen, the best horse in the county. Nothing can pass her, you know. Oh, dear, I hope so. <laughs> no, so down. What ails the dog? He may prove to be a bit of a problem, don't you think? Goodness, I hope not. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I didn't see you behind that chair. An ancient wing chair often provides a good listening post, my dear. Now, look here, you meddling busybody. Percy, please, you promised. Suppose you allow me to solve the problem of the dog, Lady Ginevra. Would you? I mean... Listen, sleigh bells. The vicar's driving up. He's here. Father Christmas has arrived. Open the door, Paddleford. Now then, everyone. Good King Wenceslas looked down On the feast of Stephen When the snow lay round about Yes, dearie, I have to declare I've never been so cold My right ear's half frozen Come along, Father Christmas Percy will take you into the dining room You can have a hot toddy while you get out of your rack That's a good idea, a good idea And better disguise your voice, sir Or all the children will guess who you are uh, That's a good idea, too uh, 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 gather round all. Uh, bring in the Yule log. <laughs> Father Christmas will be with you in a moment to give out the presents to all the good boys and girls. <laughs> there. Uh, how is that? Vicar, you're wonderful. Now go along. Take good care of him, Percy. Never fear, my dear. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, they're bringing in the Yule log. Come and help me set fire to it. Oh, oh look, Dr. Watson has caught Lady Terz under the mistletoe. I declare I've never had such a Christmas. Oh, come along, Ginevra. They're ready for you to light the fire. Oh, dear, where did I put the matches? Well, oh, happy, Lady Ginevra. Oh, thank you, Dr. Watson. Oh, oh look at yes. I say, I say, Holmes, how she burns, eh? Oh, lovely. I do like to toast my feet in front of a Yule log. I beg your pardon, Lady Ginevra, but haven't you raised your skirts a bit too high? Oh, my goodness. 
I forgot. Oh, Ginevra, my dear, your fiancé is making quite an ass of himself. He runs into the library every other minute to see no one's lifted one of the wedding presents. Well, all that silver and your present, Lady Terse, the diamond tiara. I'll admit that. Tiara is a temptation. You shouldn't have given it to me, Lady Terse. It's wonderful. Oh, not at all. A confounded nuisance. Giving me a headache for years. Glad to be rid of it. Oh, well, here, here comes Father Christmas. Gather around the punch bowl, everyone. And we'll have a drink or so before we give out the present. Oh, I say, we should. Oh, no, we oh, should. Oh, oh, That's oh, the oh, ticket. Oh, I say, though, because uh, Father Christmas, I mean, uh, start us off on a carol. Can't drink your eggnog without a song. Right you are, fair lady. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Uh, jolly, eh, Holmes? Nothing like a good old-fashioned English Christmas. Straight out of Dickens, don't you know? Hello there, Father Christmas. Not leaving us so soon. Well, uh, that is uh, a long ride home. Must get going. Uh, don't tell the others. Uh, wouldn't want to disturb the party. Quite. How about a hot toddy before you leave? Stirrup cup, you know. No, I haven't time. I haven't time. I thought you might say that, so I prepared this jug full of grog. Keep it well wrapped. It'll keep you warm. It's a long, cold drive to Gretna Green. But, what, Mr. Holmes? No time to waste. On your way, Father Christmas. Think of me when you drink the grog. We will. Wassel. Wassel. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. Hello, what's this? A vicar? Off so soon? Uh, yes, Lord Neville. He seemed in a hurry to get home. Oh, can't blame him. It's a cold night. Let us get inside before we freeze to death. Good idea. Oh, I say, oh. they're ready to start the dancing. Uh, Wentworth's trying to find Ginevra so they can lead the dancers. Help! Help! Oh, who's that calling? Oh, good heavens, what what's is that? It? Get me out! I'm locked in! Oh, someone's got himself locked in the dungeon. This way, the entrance is through the dining room. I was hoping for more of a head start. What's that? Nothing, nothing at all. Ah, this is the door to the dungeon. Let me out! Let me out, I say! Oh dear, the door is bolted. Just a moment. Get me out of here! Good Lord! It's the vicar down there in his underwear and trussed up like a New Year's goose. This is an outrage! Get me out of here! But if the vicar is here, who drove off in the sleigh? Presumably an imposter who stole the vicar's clothes. I thought it might be, you know, when I heard Father Christmas sing bass. Say, hey, Holmes, Holmes, where are you? Lady Ginevra, her fiancé can't find her anywhere. She's disappeared, vanished into thin air. Great Scott, someone get the vicar out of the dungeon. I've got to find my daughter. Oh, Mr. Holmes, come quickly. Ginevra's disappeared. Her dog is crouched in front of the dower chest, howling. Oh, hurry, gentlemen. The same scoundrel that locked the vicar in the dungeon has undoubtedly put Ginevra in the dower chest. I only hope we're not too late, eh, Holmes? Wentworth's <coughs> tried to break the chest open, but the dog won't let him near. There, you see. Easy, 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 thought good boy. Yes, 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 I know. I know what you're trying to say. We'll get her out. Oh, confound it, the key. Lady Terse, what did you do with the key? But I gave it back to you. No, you didn't. Oh, yes, you did too. Quite all right, you know. No key needed. The wood's so old and the staple's so loose, it's quite possible to lift the lock right out, like this. That's it, I'll raise the lid. Oh, great Scott, there's nothing in there but a roast of beef. Yes. Thor's made off with it, I'm afraid. That explains his interest in the chest. But if Ginevra isn't here, where is she? With Father Christmas, I imagine. They're heading to the Scottish border in the sleigh. You'll never catch them, I'm afraid. Oh, of course. She's eloped with Percy. So she did talk him round. Good for her. <laughs> so that's why she trailed off up the tower steps in that old bridal gown. I suspected as much when I discovered some of Percy's ashes on its hem. Ah, oh, but this is dreadful. I should be ruined. We'll have to return all the wedding presents. Fiddle-dee-dee. Personally, I'll make mine a much handsomer contribution. Ginevra shall have the tiara and my emeralds as well. They're worth a king's ransom. Lady Terse, you are an astounding female. All women are. Oh, but we're keeping the dancers waiting. You shall lead the dancers with me, Robert. Come along. Say, Holmes, you old fraud. I believe you knew you what was going on all the time. I suspected, Watson. I suspected. 
But when I saw the Lady Ginevra raise her ball gown and display a pair of traveling boots, I was sure. But uh, come along, Watson. We shall have to go down to the kitchen and make peace with the cook. Oh, why that? For making off with Sunday's roast of beef. Something had to be done to keep the dog interested, or he'd have given the show away. Well, that certainly was a Christmas story with all the trimmings, Dr. Watson. I'm glad you liked it, Mr. Harris. And now, while I fill up our glasses so we can drink a Christmas toast to our listeners and our sponsors. Nothing would give me greater pleasure, Dr. Watson. Ah, here's your glass, Mr. Harris. Thank you. And here's to our radio friends, young and old. Merry, merry Christmas and happiness, prosperity and peace in the new year. Indeed, Dr. Watson, and warm greetings to all the makers of Clippercraft clothes. And now, Dr. Watson, how about just a small hint about next week's story? Next week, I think I should tell you how Holmes and I spent New Year's Eve off the Silly Isles. <laughs> New Year's Eve off the Silly Isles? That sounds amusing, Doctor. Hair-raising is the word, Mr. Harris. We were aboard the luxury liner Gigantic, expecting that any minute she would burst into flames. There's nothing more terrifying, we know, than a fire at sea. <laughs> The makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and 924 leading stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is produced and directed by Basil Lochran with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clipper Craft dealer, write Clipper Craft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Christmas seals support the fight to prevent the spread of tuberculosis in this community. Buy and use Christmas seals on all your holiday mail, and be sure to mail your packages now. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in New Year's Eve off the Silly Isles. If you'd like to attend the Sherlock Holmes broadcast in New York, see your local Clippercraft dealer, and he'll tell you how to obtain your tickets. Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is the world's largest network.